Good morning once again. What a blessing it is to be here on Mama's Day, on Mother's Day 2018. And I'm excited about what God's going to do and, ha and how God's going to speak to us this morning. Uh, before I go any further, I want to recognize some folks real quick uh, that I think is very important. Uh, my mother, where's my mother at? Where are you at? Right, yep, yep, somewhere. Where's she at? I'm missing you. There, right there. My mother's here. And my wife, Emily, who is the mother of my kids, and my mother-in-law is here as well today, and I want to recognize them. And also my sister, who's pregnant with her first child, is here. So I want to say thank you, and I want to say I love you, and I'm very excited to be able to have you and thankful for you in my life before we go any further. Amen. And I also want to, uh, and I, ho I hope you guys have done that as well today, uh, but I also want to, want to recognize another group, not recognize, but just talk to another group of folks. I know that there are people in here uh, this morning who are dealing with the loss of a mother recently or maybe it's been years ago and that still weighs heavy on you today on Mother's Day as you think about that and then there are also some who some ladies who uh, struggle with, uh, with with this issue that, that, uh, they, that they're not able to, to conceive a child and I want you to know that I have compassion for you and my heart breaks for you and we love you here and I want you to understand that your purpose your purpose is in God, and that's the only place, right? God, God, is, God is your purpose, uh, and I want to encourage you with that. And, and I, I want to pray for, for those two, the two groups this morning, if we could. Can we do that? God, we, we, we come to you now, and we ask, God, first off, your blessing on those who have lost Mama recently. God, who still struggle with that and, and who, who, who are grieving, in a sense, and God, I pray that you would comfort them today and, and bring them peace and give them peace. And that they, they would understand that while Mama's not here anymore, Mama lives on inside of them and, 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 and their kids and their grandkids. So God, help us to, to understand and to be thankful for the legacy that our Mamas have, have left us, even if they've left us here on earth. And I pray for those folks. And God, I do pray for those, those ladies who, who struggle with, with, with the issue of, of, of having, having kids. I know that's difficult. I can't imagine how tough that is. And God, I just pray for peace and comfort this morning and for, for self-esteem, God, that they would understand and they would know that, that their self-esteem is not rooted in anything else but in you and that you love them and that you're fired up about who they are and that they matter. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So I want us to give thanks for women today. This is what this is all about. So if you're a, if you're a woman here today, if you're a girl, you're, you're, you're in good company today, amen. Um, I can't imagine my life without the women that I have in it and I have around me. And, and there, God, you know, is in, embodies sort of a, a male. He's spirit. He's not, he's not a person. He's not really male or female. But we, we, we kind of approach him as a male. But, but, but inside God, the Father, are both qualities that a mother would have and a father would have, right? And there are things that, that, that mothers do and mothers have that sort of show us who God is and sort of, sort, of, sort of shed light on that for us. Women and, and mothers, ladies, girls, they tend to be more grace-giving and more compassionate, right? Some of us guys, we don't have a lot of grace for people, do we? But, but our mamas and, and our ladies and, and, and women tend to be all about giving grace. And, and they understand unconditional love just like God understands it. They know what it's like to be consistent, to stand in the gap. Ladies are often kind. God is a kind God. And oftentimes women are more patient than men. There's things that, that, that you as, as women, that, that, that you exude, and that represents qualities and aspects of God. I want you to understand that, that that's important. And that, that there are so many things, let's be honest, guys, there, there are so many things that women do better than we do. So many things. Who said amen? Well, that's right. Man, let's be honest. Women keep our lives together. They keep our lives straight. I know that's true for me. And if you're a man in here this morning, if you're truthful, you'd be willing to say this. I got issues. I got issues. And if it wasn't for that lady in my life, I don't know what I would do. A perfect example of this, some of you may have seen this recently, this week, it, went, it kind of went viral. There's a video that went viral, and it was over in Georgia. There were some, uh, some good old boys out 
playing a, a, a game of beanbag toss. You guys know what that is? You know, when you stand on kind of like horseshoe, but it's with beanbags and you toss them. They call it cornhole, right? Uh, I've never called it that. I don't know where that name came from. It's what they call it over in Georgia, apparently. And so they were, ra- it was like a beanbag toss tournament. And they were raising money. These guys were raising money for a leadership scholarship at, uh, at, at, at one of the schools they were all a part of. And so guess what happens? Some of these, these old boys get up and they throw down and they get, a, they get in a fist fight at a beanbag toss game. Can you imagine that? Here they are raising funds for a leadership scholarship and they're throwing down at, at a, uh, at a uh, beanbag toss game. But the favorite part of that is, of course, there's somebody that's videoing that on the other end and there's a lady that, that's holding the camera. And what's she saying the whole time? What are y'all doing? This is crazy. Are you serious? What are y'all doing? I mean, if we're honest about ourselves, we got issues. Sometimes women are smarter than us. They are. What are y'all doing? What are y'all thinking? I'm so thankful for the ladies in my life that, that, that keep me in check. Because I can get out of check real fast. And here's what I want you to know, whether you're a woman or if you're a mother or if you're a grandmother or if you're an aunt, if you're just a young girl, I want you to understand this. What you bring to the table... It's valuable. It's so, so valuable. We call this Mama's Day, and, we, and here in a few minutes we're going to have what we're calling our Mama's Table Lunch. For those of, who have uh, reserved tables for that, we're going to have that after church. Um, and I kind of got into a debate with, my, uh, with some of the folks in the office about how do you actually spell Mama. So what I thought I would do is I'd take, I'd take a quick poll to see who's right and who's wrong. So there's two common spellings of mama, right? One is M-A-M-A and the other is M-O-M-M-A. So I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to raise your hand. I'm going to ask you, how many of you would, would spell mama, M-A-M-A? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you would spell mama, M-O-M-M-A? Raise your hand. That's like evenly split. I think M-A. I was on the side of M-A-M-A. That, that, that's, what I, that's what I thought. So... As I was talking to Michelle about this, and we were, we were thinking about how can we kind of label this and what we're going to call this day, I said, you know what? This is Texas, and this is country. And so we're going to turn to one guy and let him make the decision. And that guy's name is Merle Haggard. And Merle Haggard wrote a song called Mama Tried. And you know how he spelled it? M A M A. And in that song, Merle said this, I turned 21 in prison doing life without parole, which he actually didn't do life without parole. He got out. But no one could steer me right, but Mama tried. Mama tried. Mama tried to raise me better, but her pleading I denied. That leaves only me to blame because Mama tried. Merle wrote the song to tell the true story of how his mother tried to keep him out of trouble. Merle Haggard said his mama was an excellent mother. She was a devout Christian. She went to church twice a week. She didn't even walk to church. He was raised in that atmosphere. But Merle said that mama had his hands full with him. Merle's father died at, while he was at the age of nine uh, with, uh, with a stroke. He was nine at the time. His mother had to go to work after his father died and become the sole provider for his family. So Merle told of how his mother and tells of how his mother had a boy that was more than wild. He, he says that, that, that his mom tried to change him. And he admitted that, that through his life, he was actually glad he got locked up in prison because that's the only thing that, that, that was able to change him. Merle's mother probably thought that she was a failure. But Merle said, you know what? It ain't her fault. Mama tried. Mama tried. We're thankful for you this morning, and I realize that, that being, being a mother in this world is not easy. It's not easy at all. There's a, uh, those of you who, who do social media, um, there's a hashtag that's going around. It's hashtag mom fails. Have you guys ever, ever, ever seen that? Hashtag mom fails. You, you basically, you write, you write a little example of something that, that you didn't do very good as a mom, and you put hashtag mom fails. So I found a couple of them. I wanted to read to you today. The first one is this. A lady named Jennifer, Jennifer Campbell says this. Nothing says mom fell like your kids saying, we are tired of takeout. Can you cook, please? <laughs> Hashtag mom fell. Brittany says, nothing like waking your kid up for school on a Saturday. Hashtag mom fell. Huh? 
Abby says, the one day you don't check the temp, you guys know where I'm going, and you send your kids to school in shorts and t-shirts and you walk outside and it's freezing. Hashtag mom fail. Some of you have done that, huh? And then the lady says, when you take your child, well, wait a second, if you've got kids, cover their ears real quick. Cover their ears. You ready? When you take your child's tooth from under the pillow but forget to leave any money, hashtag mom fail. Another lady says this. I love this one. I spent 20 minutes forcibly strapping my toddler into the double stroller. I assumed his protest was a random highlight of toddlerhood. But when I let him out, I realized the seat was soaked through with the juice he spilled an hour ago. Hashtag mom fail. When your kiddo is sleeping on your arm and you drop the phone on her head, whoops, hashtag mom fail. Some of you have done that, haven't you? Here's the last one. Mama Bear, that's what she calls herself, taught my two-year-old to say no thank you instead of just no. He now thinks these magic words can get him out of anything. Take your dishes to the sink. No thank you. Clean up your toys. No thank you. Bedtime. No thank you. Hashtag mom fail. Here's what I want you to know, moms. You're not a failure. You're not a failure. And I know some of us, we feel like we're inadequate. We feel like we, we feel some guilt that we don't do a good enough job, but you're not a failure. I want you to look at what Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 says this. One of my favorite verses in all of the Bible. If you don't know it, you got to memorize this and know it by heart. It says this in Matthew 6, verse 25. The word says this. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body or what you will wear. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in, in, in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Are you not much more valuable than they one failure moms all of us doesn't mean you're a failure doesn't mean you're fa your failure there's so many things that 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 that, that mothers do that mamas do that that, that wives do that, that that women do that we sort of overlook and in our culture these days our culture just does not seem to value these things any longer and what I will tell us men today, I'm going to be a little hard on us if I can. That, that's our fault, guys. That, that's our fault. We haven't always valued women the way that we should. We haven't valued their contribution the way that we should. Throughout history, or even some of us right now, we just sort of overlook those things. And what I want to tell you ladies this morning is this. You are so valuable and what you do and what you bring to the table, it matters. And it matters so, so much. We've been in this series called Chiefs and Indians, and we're going to finish up today. And we've been kind of looking at the story of, of, of a guy named King Saul and then, then, then another guy named King David who replaces Saul. And last week we talked a little, a little bit about King Saul's uh, son, Jonathan, who became best friends with David. And we've been kind of looking at how, how their lives intersect. This morning, I want us to, to talk about a woman that's not really hardly, but barely ever mentioned in the Bible, and it's David's mother. David's mother. King David's mother. David's mother, we don't really know what her name was, and there was only two mentions of her in the Bible. I want to read those to you. King David's mother. This is king. This is a guy that, 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 that God said was a man after his own part. heart. He was, he was a guy who, who was in the royal lineage of Jesus later on. Probably, probably the, the, the best king to ever live, King David. And about his mother, Psalms 86, 16, he says this. David writes this. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength in behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you just as my mother did. We see later on in 1 Samuel chapter 22 as, as Saul is, is trying to, at this point, kill David because he's realized that David's going to assume his throne soon. So Saul goes out and chases him. And, and, and it says this in, in 1 Samuel chapter 22 verse 3. From there David went to Misphab and Moab. 
and said to the king of Moab, Would you let my father and mother come and stay with you until I learn what God will do for me? He sought out protection for his parents. So he left them with the king of Moab. These are the only two, basically the only two references that we see of David's mother in the Bible. Now, Jewish tradition, okay, this is not the Bible, this is Jewish tradition, so you can kind of take it or leave it, says that David's father, Jesse, thought David was possibly an illegitimate child, that he was an illegitimate child of his mother's, that, that she had committed adultery. But according to this tradition, David's mother, after his father chose to move on from her as his wife, actually disguises herself and is intimate once again with Jesse, David's father, and out of that, David is conceived. Now, we're not sure if that's true or not. That's what, that's what Jewish tradition has told us. But, but it sort of makes sense because we know that in 1 Samuel chapter 16, when, when, when the judge Samuel comes to appoint the next king, he comes to Jesse to try to come and anoint one of his sons as the next king of Israel. And Jesse neglects to mention David to Samuel until Samuel sort of gets it out of him, right? Remember that? Not to mention Jesse has him doing a job that, that, that you really wouldn't want to do. Jesse's kind of got him back in the backfield being a shepherd. Kind of, you know, just get away, do that. Don't bother us. Go out there. So he's shepherding, and, and, and David's out there watching his father's flock, and Samuel has to basically say, hey, Jesse, are these are the only sons that you have? Isn't there one more? And Jesse says, yeah, here's this other guy, and that was David. So, so there's a, at least a possibility that David was far from Jesse's favorite and that his mother was also possibly a very positive or influential person in his life. But we just don't know for sure. That's all tradition. That's all passed down. But what we do know is that David's mother somehow is working behind the scenes in all of these, these amazing and all these great things that are going on in his life. We know from Scripture that she did serve the Lord and that David loved her enough to protect her as he's being pursued and trying to, and basically being uh, killed, trying to be killed by, by King Saul. And I'd be, I'd be willing to bet a lot of the great characteristics that David had, he learned from his mother. We, we don't know for sure, but what we do know is that a lot of the things that, that you ladies do behind the scenes, like David's mother, you, the things that you do when no one else is looking, the small details you do for people, the things that you do here at church, the things you do for your kids, the things you do for your husbands, they're often so overlooked and so glossed over, but they matter. And they're not small. They're actually big, big things. Specifically for those of us who are mothers, your role that you've played in creating another human and teaching and training a child is often gloryless. You don't get any glory. You don't get the credit you deserve. But it's a huge responsibility, and it is infinitely influential. Proverbs 1, 8 and 9 says this, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. President Teddy Roosevelt, how many of you were alive whenever he was president? None of you. I hope not. President Teddy Roosevelt said this, When all is said and done, it is the mother and the mother only who is a better citizen than the soldier who fights for his country. The successful mother, the mother who does her part in rearing and training uh, a right, the boys and girls who are to be the men and women of the next generation, is of greater use to the community, and she occupies, if she would only realize it, a more honorable as well as an important position than any man in it. The mother is the one supreme asset of national life, Teddy Roosevelt said. She is more important by far than any successful statesman, businessman, or artist, or scientist. Men usually influence society from the top down. And the way God has set it up is that women influence society from the bottom up. And the two come together to create a godly society that God has purposely designed. And he's going to put this thing into motion. I'm having a hard time thinking of anything that anyone can do that would be more influential, more important than raising a child and raising and teaching that child about Jesus. Ladies, you can affect society in a huge, influential, massive 
way. My mom's here this morning. I, I already mentioned her, and she's going to kill me for this, but my mom is very quiet. She's, she's very loving. She's very loyal. She's, she's about the closest thing to perfect that I know as far as a mother, right? I'm biased, obviously. You probably feel the same way about your mom. She doesn't want any credit. She doesn't want to be in front of people. But she raised a son who would stand up in front of people on Sunday mornings and speak to hundreds of people. That's influence, folks. That's influence. You never know what you're doing, moms. You never know how important that is. And that's the story for so many of us. Some of you guys that are on the stage with me, your moms are here too, the same thing. Behind the scenes, doing these things, training and raising up from the bottom up. Man, what influence and what infinite importance that is. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful. It, it, it's, it's sad to me that, that one of the central focuses of the modern feminist movement is a woman's right to choose. Her right to choose to have an abortion. Now, we don't get political here, but this is not a political issue, folks. The Bible is clear. A baby is a baby at conception, and abortion is against the Lord. And we stand firmly opposed to it, and we always will. And if you've had an abortion here this morning, I want you to know that we love you. And that we have compassion on you. And we, have, we pass no judgment on you. And I want you to know that God offers forgiveness. But it's wild to me. That the very movement that's fighting for influence and for power for women is essentially robbing women of the very influence she has in raising a child. And really the blessing that happens through bringing a child up in this world and raising it. Ladies, everything in this world is screaming at you and telling you that you're not good enough. That, that you don't matter. It's telling you that. I know it. And shame on us men when we contribute to that. Men, are you creating an environment in your home where your wife can thrive? Are you? Some of us men, we can be harsh. We can be unrealistic. We can be not very understanding at times. The whole feminist movement, guys... This thing is here right now because we didn't value women and their contribution the way we should. That's why it's here. And now we've got this twisted thing and it's so backwards. But we can change it. We can change it. So many women take upon themselves to fight for equality with men. But I want, I want to tell you this, guys, that, that, that you can't compare men and women. It's not about equality. It's about value. It's like water versus oxygen. They're not equal. They're just different. They can't be compared, but they're both valuable. They're valuable. And we need water to, to live and survive. And we need oxygen to be able to breathe and to survive. Both are important. So many of you ladies, in addition to fulfilling your, your, your mom duties and your, and your wife duties, so many of you help provide for your families outside of your home. Many of you have even stepped in where a man has stepped out. And you're raising kids on your own. Let me tell you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're doing double duty. You're doing triple duty. And I want you to know that, 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 that you matter. You matter. The things you bring to the table, they matter. They're huge and they're valuable. Do not let this world discourage you. When you start buying into the, the stuff that, that, that the world's selling, if you, if you do that, you start believing those lies, you'll begin to feel worthless. You, you'll begin to feel anxious and guilty. You, you'll start feeling like you don't matter. And maybe you'll even get to the point to where you're depressed. Don't get there. Whatever it is, ladies, you bring to the table, which probably goes unnoticed. And guys, we need, to, we need to notice it. We need to call it out. We need to say thank you. But whatever it is you bring to the table is huge. Apparently, David's mother did something right. 
And then later on, apparently David did something right. Because in 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 19, we look at his son, a guy named Solomon. And he became king after David was king. And we see how Solomon has so much respect and affinity and value for his mama. Who, by the way, his mama's name was Bathsheba. And if you know anything about her, she was far from perfect. And we see this in 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 19, when, when, when she shows up to visit him after David had just died and Solomon had assumed the throne. It says this in verse 19 of 1 Kings 2. So Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak to him on behalf of Adonijah. That, that would be King uh, Solomon's brother. And the king rose to meet her and bowed down to her. Then he sat on his throne and had a seat brought for the king's mother, and she sat on his right. The Bible says this, that King Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived. That's what it says. He asked for, for wisdom and God gave it to him. And so if that is the case, and we think about the way that, that Solomon treated his mother, the, the respect that he had for her, the way he loved her, the way he valued her, the way he listened to her, even as king, she showed up and he did this. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. And he, he, set a, he set a throne beside his throne. If that's the case, if he's the wisest man in the world, what does that tell us, guys, about how we should feel about the women in our life? Ladies, you, you, should, you should feel valuable. Feel valuable. This morning, as we close... Ladies, girls, young, young women, this world wants to lie to you and tell you all kind of stuff about yourself that isn't true. It wants to try to define who you are based off of false things. But I want you to understand this, that God has created you for a unique purpose. And God has, has put things into you that are unique and that are important and that matter. Whether, that, whether you get credit for them or not, I promise you, you make a difference. And we're thankful. And for us men this morning, are we really thankful? Do we really value those women in our lives? Are we creating an environment where they can thrive? Are we honoring them the way that we should? Something to think about. Let's pray. Father, your example here in the Word, God, is strong. There's so many women that are influential in the Bible. There's so many moms that are influential. And, but so many of us, we do things behind the scenes. The ladies do things behind the scenes. And God, I pray that you would encourage their heart this morning. That in the midst of the struggle, in the midst of, of, of hard times, even when, when kids are acting crazy and and they don't feel like they measure up, God, that you don't see them as a failure. God, you created them, and, and they're fulfilling the purpose that they have. And God, I pray for, for men in here and for sons, God, that we would, we would have a, a greater affinity and a greater respect for our mothers. We, we would really understand what they do and how important their role is, how valuable they are to us. God, thank you for our mothers. The perfect example of what it means to be a chief and an Indian. Leading by serving. God, encourage us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.